Corey likes to put me in my place sometimes and let me know that I need to know what's going on because a good 50% of the time I don't know. I got it. We got it. Go. You don't even know. Stop it. <laughs> I'm going to make it on time. Good morning, everybody. It is very early right now. It's currently 4.46 a.m., which means it's time for us to go to the pool. Oh yeah, that's, that's the new car I bought, Allie. Nine months. It has been nine full months since the last time that I raced in like a real competition. But that's finally going to change. It's finally time to race, hopefully. In just a few days, USA Swimming is having their US Open. Which is crazy to think about because the last meet that I swam at was a pro series in March, and then the meet before that was US Open a year ago. Now obviously this year's meet is gonna be a lot different from last year's US Open for a lot of reasons. I'm definitely like the first person here. As, as usual, because of COVID, USA Swimming still can't have like regular competitions. So this year, instead of one US Open with like a thousand swimmers or however many people competed that meet, they're having like 10 different locations with only like a hundred swimmers. Now lucky for me, of all the locations that they're having these little mini meets in, there's gonna be one close to me. There's meets all over the country. There's one in California. There's meets on the, on the East Coast. And lucky for me, oh, there's a meet at my favorite pool, the Nat in Indianapolis. The only thing that would prevent me from racing again and breaking this nine month long streak is if Allie goes into labor. So I've asked her to try to not, I'm just kidding. She, she, might, she, might, go in, she might go into labor. <laughs> But the the pool in Indy is like really close to our hospital and she could be at her parents house for the short amount of time that I'm at the meet It's gonna work out Laura. It's gonna work out. Laura and I get to start our taper set this morning Laura, how much are we doing? Tell me the to tell me the bottom line 4300 nice. I like to tear the workout just so slightly so that there's less paper and only words it's just the thing I do. This morning we're hitting some speed work, just a little bit of resistance training, a little bit of 25s with tempos. I'll, I'll throw it up in a, in a, in a time lapse for you in a minute. Best part of the day. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even have to say anything. You just did it. You just cued it. I, oh man. Well, I might as well be the first one in now. Just to be clear, I did not prompt Laura to say anything. I was just gonna put the GoPro in her face and say, it's go time, Laura. And then she just, that was kind of, that was funny. People have been asking me when I'm gonna vlog like a, a good old fashioned distance practice again, something that royally sucks. I will after the competition or after the birth of my first child because I love doing it, but we've been doing a lot of sprinty stuff to prepare for the meet, so. Oh, I missed it. Oh. One day soon, I'll throw down the, in the D group with Marwan over there. Ah, I keep missing you every time. <laughs> Marwan, after you, it's open. Challenge group, you and me. You gotta do something that sucks. Just some real humble pie. This is the fourth time in a row that I've left late. <laughs> I left late on all four of those 50s. It's, all good. it's very difficult to vlog swim practices. I don't care what people say. 
It's hard. I got a pocket, got a pocket full of sunshine. And... It's gonna be in your head now, Tristan. Oh, it is. You're welcome. Thank you. Take me away. Don't sing it. You're not a shooter. Oh, sorry. Oh, On, on the set? Yeah. I think so. I worry about you. Thank you. You know... It's, it's not even 6 in the morning yet. You're bouncing off the walls. Sometimes I gotta like... You gotta, I gotta be the sheepdog that brings yeah, you back. Yeah, yeah. Damn it. What are we doing here? 425. I know what I'm doing! I know. <laughs> and Corey got me good on that one. Sometimes I get excited and don't know what's going on. Just... It just happens. We're about to start the hardest part of the set. 850s on 50, holding 200 pace. But well, we get gear, we get fins and paddles, so, you know. One, eight, three, one. Six, two. Oh, yeah. Pretty good, right? I'm doing pretty good. Four out. I got a pocket, got a pocket full of sunshine. Oh, no. It's been hard being that good, Laura. <laughs> Four out. Five, nine. I definitely thought we had one more. That's like the best feeling ever. Yeah. When you finish and you're like, oh, we're actually pushing oh, down. Sweet. So I was talking to some of the coaches right after we just finished that swim about some of the details regarding US Open. I know I've been talking about US Open like this whole vlog, but I mean, that's what I'm looking forward to. And that's what we're training for. There's some interesting stuff regarding the competition. So we're gonna go home, hop online and, and ch check it out. This is interesting. It looks like some sites that are hosting a US Open event are allowing spectators and some aren't. Of the nine, it looks like four of them are. Indianapolis, unfortunately, isn't. Which means none of my friends can really come and watch, which I'm not really surprised by. The Indiana University site will be capped at 170 swimmers, 85 female, 85 male. Results from each site will be combined by USA Swimming and published in a comprehensive results report. So it looks like everyone that's competing at different sites, they're gonna aggregate all the results and there's gonna be winners based upon whoever's times were fastest. It's basically a big virtual meet, which is better than nothing. I'll take what I can get. They have split the men and the women. So there's a women's session, and then a men's session, and then a women's session, and then a men's session. Basically just time finals, and then they even have time slotted for clearing out the deck and like cleaning and all, all that stuff. The only big bummer here is because they've split the sessions, I won't be able to watch any of the girls swim. I can't even be on deck when that's happening. Like it's very separate. So I can't watch Laura swim. Friday, November 13th at 4 p.m. That's the session with the men's 100 breaststroke. So I will be racing then. By the time you see this, that'll be like two days. So in two days from when you're probably watching this, I will be racing the 100 breast. And then the 200 breaststroke the following morning, Saturday, November 14th, starting at 9 a.m. One more time, here we go. All right, go ahead. Go play it, Lego. Fingers crossed that the baby doesn't decide to come on that Friday or Saturday or even the Thursday before. Maybe earlier in the week, or after would be would be great, but who knows, by the time I edit, upload, and get this video ready, the baby might already be here and I might not be racing, but we will see. Now I've got a couple things to do. Number one, I'm gonna watch the new episode of The Mandalorian, which I'm very excited about. Number two, there's a new ISL match starting in about two hours, so we're gonna watch that. But before that, let's talk about today's sponsor. You wanna learn about a VPN, Puffy? You don't need the internet. You don't even use the internet. Today's video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. I've been using ExpressVPN for years and years now, and I use a VPN for two main reasons. Uh, reason number one is security, and reason number two is being able to access things on Netflix that aren't always available in my area. On the topic of security, if you live in the United States, it doesn't matter who your internet service provider is, whether it's Verizon or Comcast or whatever, here they can legally sell your data for outrageous prices. They can monitor all of your information and kind of see what you're doing. By using a VPN, you stop that process dead in its tracks. Because when you're using ExpressVPN, it basically encrypts all of your data and sends it through 
through a secure location so those internet service providers or potential hackers can't kind of dip in and look at your information. I almost always use a VPN, especially when I'm traveling. When I'm staying in a hotel or traveling through an airport, I always use the ExpressVPN app on my phone just to make sure I have that that sense of security. My favorite thing about using a VPN is that I regularly access content on Netflix and other streaming devices that currently isn't available in my area. For example, one of my favorite shows right now is Star Trek Discovery. Because I'm a nerd, I like, I like Star Trek. Anyway, it's not currently available on Netflix here in America but it is on Netflix in the UK. So all I have to do is set my VPN to another location overseas in the UK and boom, with just the touch of a button, I'm able to access that show. Ali and I recently wanted to watch Shazam, which is a goofy superhero movie, but that movie isn't available on Netflix here in America. So I searched online where in the world that movie was available on Netflix and then boom, Australia. I set ExpressVPN to my location in Australia, and then just like that, we were able to watch that movie. If you guys are interested, find out how you can get three months free by clicking the link in the description below, expressvpn.com slash Cody. Follow me on social media, at Swim Miller on Twitter and at Cody Miller on Instagram. Vlogs every Wednesdays, sometimes Fridays. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and share my videos with your friends. That helps me. Merch is available on the merch store and we've got a lot of new stuff coming. Really exciting stuff. Check that out if you're interested. And until my next video, I will see you guys later.